It's time to let your photography get messy. It's time for you to stop grooming your photography so much. What do I mean by that? Well, we'll get into it in a second. First of all, who am I? My name is Mike Patterson. I've been a professional photographer located here in Southern Alberta, Canada for over 38 years. I run a full service studio as well as a full service photo lab. I do teaching. I, I do tons of stuff in the photography world. And I've been seeing something lately that has, well, it's really got me concerned. And I shouldn't even say lately. I've seen something developing over probably the last dozen years or so where our photography has gone from being realistic to being artificial. I, I guess the best word would be plasticky. And I'm not just talking about lately with the advent of AI technology. I, I've been seeing this for a long time. And well, it, it doesn't matter if you're a wedding photographer or a nature photographer. It doesn't matter if you're photographing uh, babies or you're photographing grizzly bears. It, it really doesn't. We've gone from having pictures that are, well, semi-realistic to pictures that are so touched up that they look like a McDonald's hamburger ad. I, I think what it must be like in a thousand years time for somebody to dig up an old McDonald's ad to look at their hamburger and think, this is the greatest thing ever. And then somebody <laughs> reads a report of somebody who actually ate one of those hamburgers. And our pictures have become like that. And it's not just one photographer. It's not just a group of photographers. It's not just people photographers. It's not just scenic photographers. It's everything. Now, before you get upset, before you start putting posts in, before you start slamming me on social media, understand I'm not against Photoshop. I'm not against editing. And one of the things that ticks me off probably the most of any comment somebody can give is Ansel Adams never did this dodging or burning or whatever. Sure he did. Or Michelangelo always painted exactly what he saw or well, whomever. It doesn't matter. People always throw that at me because, well, nowadays we just go too far. No, no, I'm not talking about editing. I'm not talking about cleaning up. I'm talking about taking it to the extreme. So an example, and this happened a number of years in my studio. I had a gentleman come in, local business person, somebody with a ton of money, lots of power. Uh, his shirt was probably worth more than my camera. His tie was probably worth more than my computer. His pants were probably worth as much as my car and his shoes were probably worth as much as my house. Yes, I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea. His hair was perfect. He, he looked like he just came from a professional shave. Everything was perfect. I did his business portraits. They looked great. They looked fantastic. They looked fabulous. He wanted me to go through and edit the picture he chose. Okay, fine, no problem. What's wrong with it? Well, he found a hair out of place. It was no big deal. Could you see it? If you really look close, you could see it. Zoomed in at 50 times, you could see it. On a 8x10 print, 11x14 print, or on a business card, you would never see it. Fine, no problem, I fixed it. He saw a flaw on his skin. Tiny flaw, fixed it, no problem. It looked great. Then he looked at his shirt and he says, my shirt doesn't look like it's fitting properly. It looked perfect. It looked absolutely fabulous. Yes, there were some creases where his arms were. They weren't folds. They weren't ripples. They were just little creases. His body, anybody's body will do that to a shirt. This was just the time when Photoshop was actually coming out to the general public. And he brought up in a rather condescending way that he would like it if I learned how to fix the picture. I said, well, I know how to fix the picture. He says, well, I want you to go through and I want you to fix and remove all the creases in my shirt. And I says, you don't want that. He says, yes, I do. So I did three versions for him. I did one where I fixed the creases and everything a little bit, but I left them there so you could still see them. I went a little bit further and then I did what he called, this was his word, I painted the shirt so that it looked perfect. Now, the painted one made it look like he was standing behind a cardboard cutout of a shirt. It looked horrible. It didn't fit his body. His body, everything looked bad about it. I sent him the three samples because that's what he requested. And he chose that one. Printed it, came in, picked it up, left. Approximately a week later, he came back and he says, nobody likes this picture. They say I look funny. Yeah, I know you do. I didn't say that exactly to him. But I said, yes, I know. 
And he says, they say that it looks like my shirt doesn't fit me properly. Yes, I know. So he finally chose the first one I did. Printed it off, came and picked it up, looked at it, sort of shrugged and left. I've still done work for him since. <laughs> he's never said that he didn't like that picture, but he's never asked for me to retouch as much as he did back then. And I see it so often in people photography that we go overboard, but it's not just the people, don't get me wrong. It's in nature as well. Another example, a photographer came in here asking for me to print a 24 by 36 picture a number of years ago. It was a really nice picture of an elk, beautiful. Early morning, the lighting was perfect. Everything was ideal. Brings me in the digital file. I put it on my screen. I checked it out to make sure that I didn't see anything wrong with it. It looked really good. I said, yeah, it looks really good. Oh, I think we'll go ahead and print it. I said, I don't see anything with it. And he goes, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. He said, I see a couple things I want to fix. He said, I'm going to take it home and bring it back. Approximately a week later, maybe two weeks later, he came back with that picture. Put it on the screen and I noticed that he had fixed it, but it wasn't good fixed. So I tried to politely tell him and he said, no, 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 I like it. I like it like that. It looked like he had taken the elk to a dog groomer and they had spent six hours grooming the elk so that every hair laid the right way. So that er everything was just perfect. Every blade of grass above about three inches tall was shaved off. So it looked like it was a manicured lawn. It didn't look like it was in the mountains. Every tree had every leaf on it. So they almost looked identical. In fact, I almost think that what he did was he went in and he found a clip art picture of a leaf and he just resized it and put it on the tree. It looked bad. It did not look good. We put it on the monitor again, took a look at it. He asked me to zoom in. I zoomed in. I think I was in at 100% or maybe 200%. And he just started shuddering. He's just, oh, he said, oh, look at the grain, look at the noise. Oh, that, that's that's just, that the noise is horrible. Oh no, he says, I have to fix that. I says, it looks great. You're not going to see it. We're not going to. It's not going to look like that. Oh no, no, no. Well, he took it. A couple weeks later, he came back with it again. Yes, it's taken a long time for him to do all this. This was before the noise reduction software. So he went in and he added some blur. He did this. He did that. He did everything to denoise it at, that you could do at the time. It looked plasticky, it looked horrible. Finally, he says, okay, fine. He says, I'll, I'll accept it. My client's getting upset, uh, let's print it. So I printed it, 24 by 36, mounted it, laminated, came in to pick it up a few days later, puts it on the counter in front of him and he puts his face like that, an inch, maybe an inch and a half from the picture. And he starts looking at it. I was waiting for him to pull a loop out to take a look at it. <laughs> I've had people do that before. And I says, people aren't going to look that close. I says, a 24 by 36 picture, they're going to be standing at least six feet away, four feet away, eight feet away. He says, they're not going to look that close. He says, but I see, I see. Well, I heard from friends of friends that he had had it printed five more times after I did it. Still didn't get it to the client. It was over six months later and the client canceled the order. We have sanitized our stuff so much that it's ridiculous. I'm doing this video because the other day I had a, oh, a family member of a bride bring me in some pictures. They were nice pictures. I mean, they were very nice wedding pictures. They were done, wow, they, they were really nice. But as we were looking at the pictures, this family member said, do they not look funny to you? And I hadn't looked at them that close, but I said, no, they look fine. And then I zoomed in and I realized that the bride and groom's skin was plastic. And I mean plastic. Her dress was plasticky looking. Her flowers looked like they were plastic. They had edited so much out of it that there wasn't a hair out of place because the hair looked like it was a glob of plastic. The, the groom, everything was just, it, it just, it was over edited. We need to stay messy people. I'm not against editing. I'm not against if you see a bug on a groom's tuxedo or a, a smear of makeup on his tuxedo of getting rid of that. That's a good thing. I'm not against a stray hair going out. That, that's a good thing if it's distracting from the picture. But we have to understand we can't sanitize stuff so much that we're getting rid of the realistic look to it. A couple years ago, 
I was watching an article on TV about a photographer in New York. They did these prints and they were really nice looking prints. And they were doing a show and these prints were selling 11 by 14 prints for $1,000. And they were hung up with clothespins on this wire, which I have actually behind the camera, a similar system. And they looked really nice. But I noticed that the paper was torn in places. I noticed there were some smears on the edges of the paper where it looked like they smeared it. And then they talked about how the photographer would retouch some of the pictures with ink, with different pastels, with just all different stuff to make it look different. But the photographer didn't sanitize it so much to get rid of the edges where they smeared and stuff. They left the edges there and it made the pictures look more realistic. It made them look like they, well, were a real picture and not just a plasticky reproduction that's been sanitized. Another situation that happened a number of years ago, there was a local photographer who did some work with, well, a model that was, I don't know if she was world famous, but she was locally very famous and nationally very famous. And this photographer did amazing work. And I mean, amazing work. They went out and did a shoot for this person with hair, makeup, clothing, the whole works. They had people from all different areas helping this model to look perfect. The pictures were really good, but the pictures look, again, plasticky, artificial. In the midst of shooting, the model had taken a break and put on, well, what she had called her street clothes. Still looked nice, still looked great, her hair had not, it had been changed a little bit, but it hadn't been finished. Her makeup, she had got rid of some makeup and she, and she went for a break and she came back from the break. And while she was sitting in a chair, relaxing, the photographer took a snapshot of her. Nothing posed, nothing edited, nothing, nothing at all. Of all the pictures that that photographer shot that day, the one picture that that model fell in love with was that picture of her hair not perfect, her makeup not perfect, the clothes not perfect. In fact, one of the collars was just a little bit creased and stuff. It, it looked like she had just come back from, I don't know, picking up the kids at school or getting groceries or something. She looked amazing in that picture. She looked alive. She looked, well, she looked real. And she bought that print. All the other prints that she had done, she wasn't interested in, but that print she fell in love with. She had a big copy of it made. That print was her because it wasn't overly edited. So what do you do? How do you get away from making it plasticky? Look at the picture that you're editing. If anything jumps out to you immediately, I would edit that out. If there's a hair that's really out of place, if there's something that's really out, I would get rid of that. After that point, shut the computer down, close the picture, do something else for an hour, two hours, three hours a day. Turn the computer back on, look at the picture once more. Anything else jumps out to you immediately, then fix it. Don't start zooming in, don't start over editing, don't start over analyzing. Just take a quick look and then leave it from there. Don't start doing anything more. Again, I talked about the elk person. I had another person come in with a beautiful picture. It was an amazing picture of a bighorn ram. And I looked at the picture and I couldn't figure out why it annoyed me so much. And then I realized that every blade of grass was perfectly 64.25 degrees or whatever it was. And every blade of grass looked identical to every other blade of grass. And I politely asked him, I said, oh, did you do any editing on this picture? Well, yeah, yeah, I did a little bit. And I said, well, what did you do? Well, there, there was a little bit of thing on the side of the, I said, oh, okay, yep. And, and I got rid of this thing in the sky. I said, oh, okay, yep, yep. And then they said, oh yeah, and the, the grass looked really messy, so I cleaned it up. No, you didn't clean it up, you destroyed it. It didn't look like it was in nature. I'm gonna put a picture here, and I'm gonna show you a picture. This is not edited. This picture is actually how it is. But the place is so manicured that when you look at it, it looks like the buildings have been put in over top of the grass. It, it doesn't look real because they manicure the grass so much. It's at Bar U Ranch here in Alberta. It's a national park and, and it's very well maintained. It, it's a beautiful place. But look at how clean everything looks. It doesn't look reasonable. 
And this is what we're doing to so many different pictures. And again, this one's not edited. So don't make your pictures so they look edited. Don't make your pictures so that they look well, sanitized, plasticky. Leave them a little bit messy. And I think you're going to find that people like your pictures a lot more. I think you're going to find you like your pictures a lot more. And if you're selling them, I think you're going to find that you'll sell more. So until next time, have a great day. Get out there and take some amazing pictures, but don't over edit them. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye now.